help you don't worry about that stuff. Alright. Okay. I think I'm good to go. Welcome, honored guests, teachers, students, parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, and future Walmart employees. I mean, <laughs> graduates. Um, when I was given the privilege to be our valedictorian, I honestly had no clue what to talk about, so I, so I decided to consult Mrs. Wiley. And she told me I could talk about anything I wanted. So, I decided to remember sham wows. Oh. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what a sham wow is, it's probably the greatest invention since the potato gun. Now, I say that because I don't know, I've never shot a potato gun, but I think it's a pretty awesome thing, and something that shoots a vegetable at somebody is really awesome. Um, <laughs> But, like, personally, I really hate the guy who advertises this. So does Landon. Um, he is more annoying than that little red, 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 red riding him kid off those Sassdell commercials. Does anybody agree with me? Okay, but believe it or not, my shamo actually serves a purpose aside from me bringing it up here and looking like an idiot, which I'm pretty good at. Keep it up here. Um, every time I raise my sham wow, I would like everyone in this building to applaud. Because I'm about 90% positive the international symbol for getting a large group of people to clap their hands is raising a sham wow above your head. So, failing that, um, could you guys like do a practice with me to make sure I don't look like an idiot when I do this? <laughs> I should probably start this speech. <laughs> a wise man by the name of Dean Drennan once told me that 5% of life is uncontrollable and 95% is what you do with it. Now as soon as I heard this quote, I began thinking about that itty bitty 5%. It's not that tiny number. When I get 5% of my math test, I am not impressed. <laughs> so, what can I not control? Anyways, uh, I can't control who my parents are, I can't control the economy, I can't control the changes to Facebook, I can't control the ridiculous gas prices, I cannot control the end of quarter gas, and I know I can't control my classmates. Fine, that's an overstatement. Uh, I can control them as much as the Leafs can make the playoffs. <laughs> Show how much Jay Leno makes fun of sham wows. <laughs> or snuggies. So let's face it, there are a lot of things I cannot control. But what can I control? Well, the clothes I wear, the people I hang out with, what I do on a Friday night, what I don't do on a Friday night, how much I eat, how mean I choose to be to Peggy Will at the co op on a day to day basis. <laughs> well, this goes on. But it wasn't until becoming valedictorian that I realized I couldn't control things like the laws of physics or gravity. And then I realized there's another really neat thing I couldn't control, time. Now, you guys might think I'm a little screwed up, which is true, for proclaiming that I cannot control time. But let's face it, a minute's been a minute from now to a minute ago, to the moment the Leafs last won the cup, which was a very long time ago. <laughs> so we cannot control time. We can control, we can control how much time we have, but I'm pretty sure we wouldn't want to prolong a thing such as grad, right? The point I'm trying to get across, because there is one, is that time passes us by faster than a sham while absorbs water. How many of us remember our first day of school? First day of high school? Does it not seem like yesterday? Our time in school is limited. And for that reason, we should absorb the moments that are set before us, just as the sham while would. We have one month left in this building that has somehow tolerated us for six years. And looking back, we have to decide if what we did throughout these years is enough. We have to carry out this exact same mindset to wherever life ends up taking us. The mindset that tells us if we're living on top of a happy hill or a somber sewer. <laughs> and I really hope we all end up on top of that happy hill so I don't have to do that stupid somber sewer thing again. It's <laughs> a terrible speech. <laughs> but to get to such a place, it takes more than just ourselves. We need teachers to help us develop new ways of thinking and getting around problems. 
We owe all too much to our instructors who day by day tell Land and Scott and Nathan to sit down and shut up. And I honestly don't think there's a clue, I honestly don't think there's a clue upon why you show up to work every day, knowing we'll be here. But you have no idea how much we appreciate it when you help us obtain much needed credit. So thank you, teachers. I would also like to thank one individual staff member in particular. Mrs. Heinwart? It isn't you. Don't worry, Mrs. Heinwart, you know we love you. We just hope it's mutual. Um, this person has been with us from start to end, and I'm virtually convinced that if it wasn't for us, he wouldn't be employed. Mr. Woods, You've cleaned every classroom that we've ever touched and prevented them from looking like worse disasters than the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> so for that, and always giving us a smile in the halls, you honestly you have no idea how much we appreciate you, so thank you. <laughs> we've also gone through the community, who have supported us through some crazy ideas, such as shaving off the mob's worth of hair for cancer. You've also employed many of us so we can go out and buy a bag of munchies to keep our batteries recharged during a hard day at school. So for keeping this awesome town running and giving us jobs and giving us smiles and maybe hugs when we're in the co-op, we'd like to thank you. <laughs> Most importantly, I would like to thank the parents because I'm all too sure we don't do it enough. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here today. You, where am I? You made us go to school at the prime age of six and have motivated us to keep on trucking to this day. You brought us into this world, raised us, packed our lunches, hugged us, and most of all, you made sure that we locked arms with you so we wouldn't fall as we were walking to the stage on our high heels. <laughs> so parents, you know, you've done so much for us and there's virtually nothing we can do to repay you. So we'll just smile and say, thanks mom and dad. Graduates, our clock is ticking just as fast as it was when we started school. It may not seem like it, but that's a 5% you will have to deal with. We have grown up so much in the past few years and it blows me away. As I used to find school to be a very miserable place, I used to find school to be a very miserable place. And now, I can proudly proclaim we have turned it into a circus. <laughs> I cannot possibly imagine living in a world without walking, talking, human iPods such as the Scott Pod and Nathan Pod. A world where I can I can sit around in class and hear something highly inappropriate from Landon Ennis. But I know I'll be laughing at him for two seconds later. A world where I can always receive help with my chemistry from virtually anyone because I really don't understand it, right Mr. Byatt? <laughs> A world without this unique group of individuals is something we will all have to comprehend. So as we're all going 140 down all sorts of highways of life, it's my hope that as you look into your rear view mirror and see this unique group of individuals, you'll be able to smile upon the memories we have created and say it was worth it. So thank you, peace out, rock on, and God bless.